everybody. Um, grab a beer and pull up a chair. It's time for another review. I know it's been a hot minute since I've done one. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I've recently moved to Atlanta and um, I'm doing graduate school up here at the Portfolio Center of studying art direction. So things have been a little busy. But uh, thanks to all this godforsaken snow, had a lot of free time on my hands and been pretty lazy not actually getting around to doing any, but I decided to go ahead and do one now. Um, and take advantage of some of the really great opportunities as far as um, new beer to try that I've got up here. Um, I also plan to, to do some burial reviews coming up later, but um, sticking with the uh, great tradition of doing a lot of farmhouse cell reviews on this channel, I decided to do some Jester King. So we're going to be reviewing Commercial Suicide. I know my lighting is not real good here, but doing a Commercial Suicide from Jester King out of Austin, Texas. Um, I'm not going to read any of the shit that's related to making cockney jokes, but um, I will read some of the more basic descriptions. They call it a farmhouse mild inspired by traditional English, English mild ales. Commercial Suicide retains the sessionability of its classic counterpart while taking on its own unique sense of place through fermentation in an oak fooder. And with yeast and bacteria, the Texas Hill Country unfiltered and pasteurized 100% bottle condition. Um, and I think we're looking at, let's see here. Hmm. Surely ABV is on here somewhere. I think it's like 6%. I don't remember. Um, uh, oh, here we go. 3.3. So real low. Um, so quick note on my experiences with Jester King. Um, I've had some of it. I think I've had their black metal stout probably about six or eight years ago at this point. May maybe less. Probably, maybe, let me put it this way, at least four years ago. Um, and I don't remember anything about it. They were actually in the Birmingham market, in the Alabama market generally, and then it pulled out. So, who's to say? But anyway, really excited to try this. I've kind of gotten into farmhouse sales, you know, since the last time I, I tried them. As y'all know, I'm real big on those. We're big on saisons and stuff like that. So, um, super pumped to try some stuff that I just wasn't so aware of at the time. We'll get it into a glass and see what's going on here. So getting that kind of, you know, mild ale color for sure. Um, and um, kind of a deep, deep nutty color. Like I said, guys, I apologize on the lighting. I'll, I'll have to figure something else out. You get some, some kind of nice red-brown hues here. Um, a kind of frothy two-finger head on it. It's a real pleasant looking beer. Um, kind of looks like sweet tea, if I'm being honest. And like I said, I know it kind of looks black in the image here. Let's see, maybe I can get it in a decent enough light. That's a little better. But uh, anyway, hmm. So immediately, kind of some nutty, sort of hazelnut stuff going on there. A little bit of chocolate. Um, kind of that, that powdery malty kind of note. Um, I imagine this is probably going to take a little bit of time to open up, so we'll come back to the nose, and I'll go ahead and just kind of taste it, and we'll see what's going on here. Okay, so immediately, um, you get some kind of berryness. You get this real, real um, strong kind of tannic, tannic note that suggests you know the kind of the deep the deep berry jammy note of, of a red wine without really full-on being those notes um, I've got to be honest immediately I don't really care for this um, it's it's a little bitter it's a little salty sort of it's got kind of that um, lactic sourness to it but um, there's not really a whole lot that's very rewarding, as far as I can tell. Yeah, there's a real unpleasant um, aftertaste going on here that I just can't say I'm a fan of. And, um, you know, I think this probably needs some time to sit and open up a little bit so I'm gonna take a take a second here kind of absorb 
some other things that are going on, maybe give it about five minutes or so, and I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about it. All right, well, I'm back. I took just a minute here to kind of take in what else is going on um, and kind of read, read, some, read some more stuff about it uh, just to see what other people had said. Um, one of the things that they observed was a toasty note. I am kind of getting that. And it does open up a little bit, but I, I will say it's it's hard for me to to adequately express to you how immediately unpleasant it is when it comes out of the bottle. It does get better. Um, and I do, I don't know that this would be the first thing I'd reach for. Um, if I went to the store, I, I would say probably not. But it, this has a place. Um, but like I said, that... um. My first instinct is that the um, the the situation that that the English elves find themselves in of being kind of um, fruity and earthy and stuff like that, um, the way that it's and and really really I think it's the nuttiness, the way that the nuttiness gels with the tannic qualities here and the toastiness gels with the tannic qualities here and all of that merges with the farmhouse yeast. I, I just don't I don't think it's the best combo to be real honest with you um, I would say that you know in a way I can kind of taste both of the um, both of the ales that are being represented here with the uh, with the English mild and the um, and the saison the farmhouse ale but to me there's kind of the uh, the merger of those two is, is less than Less than pleasant, I would say. Um, I'm sure that they make a lot of good stuff. I don't remember disliking black metal when I had it. Um, obviously, I don't feel good enough to comment on that experience because it's been just such a long time. But um, you know, like I said, the uh, there's there's a bitterness here that I find unpleasant. You know. Yeah, there's there's some there's some flavors here that border on um like a Flemish brown or a you know Flanders red or or, an, or re, sorry rather an old brown or a Flanders red, but um those nutty flavors just kind of supplant supplant that and you know this kind of to me tastes like maybe a um. A lesser one of those beers that was taken out of the uh, the fooder before it was done, um, because it feels like it's you know it's sitting somewhere in between being one of those and just being slightly old beer. Um, you know something that was taken out of the oven a bit early, and don't get me wrong, I think this is probably what they intended, and I don't I don't hate it. It's okay. I don't hate it, but I, I don't really think I can recommend it either. Um, so, yeah, guys, um, unfortunately, those are my thoughts on Jester King commercial suicide. Um, I may revisit this later, but as of now, probably not very likely. Um, as always, if you're drinking, keep drinking. If you're brewing, keep brewing. Cheers, plus, and a vocal song.